morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for March 31st, 2025 nationwide. Low pressure moving through the Northern Territory right now, which is expected to dump some more rainfall across already saturated parts of southwestern and western Queensland. More significant rainfall is on the cards down there, not as much as what we have seen over the last couple of weeks, but we are still going to be talking about high double digit, high double digit, if not triple digit rainfall accumulations across parts of southwestern Queensland and into the Channel Country. Let's jump straight into the forecast modelling for it right now. This rainfall is driven by the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Diane which is still located over in Western Australia. You can actually make that out on the satellite imagery. We do have that low pressure system just located between Fitzroy Crossing and Balgo Hill, uh, just outside of Fitzroy Crossing actually, but there's a massive band of moisture being dragged in over the Northern Territory and then into South Australia, which includes a bunch of convection and some steady rain that's currently falling around the Alice Springs area, just across the entire southern portion of the Northern Territory, currently under a thick band of cloud with a little bit of rainfall associated with it. We're expecting the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Diane to get a little bit of forward motion packed onto them uh, throughout the course of today and meet up with a bit of tropical moisture moving through the Northern Territory and into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And starting from tomorrow night, we're expecting rainfall to really begin to pick up across Western Queensland. It's going to start with showers and thunderstorms across the Cape York Peninsula and showers and thunderstorms expected across the Western extremities of Queensland from about Tuesday lunchtime, so tomorrow lunchtime, which could include Mount Isa getting a few good thunderstorms, especially towards the south of Mount Isa, down towards Bullier and Bedori, uh, through tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. Some good showers and thunderstorms are expected to be quite widespread in those areas. There's some steady rain extending down into the Channel Country and then into the northern half of South Australia as well. Showers and thunderstorms also into the immediate southwestern corners of Queensland, reaching as far south as the New South Wales border as well. Steady rain will then begin to increase through tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, around Bedora and then into Windora, easing off around the Bedora and Bullier area through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then this rainfall begins to head steadily towards the east, picking up around Windora, reaching a maximum uh, sometime around midnight into very early Wednesday morning and then peak rainfall accumulation is expected to pick up around the Charleville area and then across towards Roma and Tambo by tomorrow afternoon and then into tomorrow evening respectively. We are expecting a few good showers and thunderstorms to also extend into southeastern Queensland as well and widespread showers and thunderstorms also expected across the eastern Queensland coastline right from the northeast New, uh, New South Wales coast uh, up through the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane and those sort of areas and then through Bundaberg, Rockhampton, Mackay and as far north as Townsville and we're still expecting showers and thunderstorms to be quite widespread across pretty much all of northern Queensland. Heavy showers and thunderstorms will clear out of saturated parts of uh, Queensland, including Winton and Mount Isa, through late Wednesday uh, afternoon and into early Wednesday evening, and then these showers and thunderstorms will then begin to die off through Thursday morning, and you can see showers and thunderstorms contracting to more tropical and more wetter locations through Thursday and into Friday before clearing out of Queensland pretty much completely by this weekend. So there is still a little bit more rainfall to come, and I guess this forecast is now starting to raise some alarm bells for southwestern Queensland, but I do want to preface all of the, uh, the rainfall accumulation talk here by saying that this is nowhere near as much rainfall as we have seen over the last 10 days in this part of Queensland. Whilst we are still talking about some significant rainfall accumulations, especially when you stack them up against the average annual accumulations of this part of Queensland, we could be talking about a couple of months or even again a year's worth of rainfall for some of these places here, for some of the drier locations especially. It pales in comparison to the rainfall that we have seen over the last week and as such the, contr uh, the contribution to the floodwaters across the Queensland's uh, major rivers such as the Diamantina and the Cooper Creek area are not likely to be anything major or significant and they will only halt the flooding situation as opposed to making it any worse than what it is now. It'd be a real feat for these river for this rainfall to make these river conditions any worse across this part of Queensland. Anyways, let's talk some solid numbers now. So this is over the next five days, including today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You can see rainfall accumulations up to 150 millimeters across some locations into the Northern Territory. Alice Springs can expect up to 80 millimeters. The majority of that is going to fall in steady falls throughout the course of today. Showers and thunderstorms around the Mount Isa area could bring up to about 50 millimetres or so to Mount Isa throughout the course of tonight and into tomorrow uh, and also out towards Wednesday morning and then showers and thunderstorms towards the north of Mount Isa will also bring some substantial rainfall accumulations there up to 150 millimetres of much needed rainfall in those locations and then down towards Bullia where about 40 millimetres is expected, Bedori where up to 60 millimetres can be expected and Birdsville where rather uncertain anywhere between 20 and 40 millimetres can be expected in those locations. Again this is steady rainfall but considering how how parched these communities are, uh, how saturated these communities are, and how uh, not in a desperate need for rainfall these communities are, it is just for the most part going to become runoff, and it is just going to con uh, contribute to these river levels across this part of Queensland. So the rainfall is definitely not welcome at, at this time uh, across southwestern Queensland. Whilst a couple of drops of rainfall won't do any harm, uh, a lot of these places could expect some steady falls of up to 50 millimetres across a 12 hour or 24 hour period, and a lot of that is just going to come runoff and contribute to the uh, rise of.
and the river levels that we could be expecting through Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning. Windora could be seeing about 50 millimetres of rainfall. Adavale as well, about 50 millimetres of rainfall. Quilpie up to about 40 millimetres. Charleville, Augustella and Wyandra could see up to about 60 millimetres of rainfall. And then rainfall will continue to increase as you get closer towards southeastern Queensland, where falls could be anywhere between 30 up to 100 millimetres around Gundawindi, Wollongara, Stanthorpe and Lismore into the northeastern side of New South Wales. Falls between 20 and 80 millimetres can be expected across the Sunshine Coast and down in towards southeastern Queensland as well. Brisbane likely to be on the lighter side of these rainfall accumulations, but as we've seen with the rainfall around the Sunshine Coast, if we see a convergent zone fire up sometime on Wednesday morning, we could be seeing some really substantial rainfall accumulations there. Again, down in the Sunshine Coast, just considering the amount of variability that we can see in rainfall, it's going to be a kind of take-it-as-it-comes type of rainfall forecast down there. We can't really be putting exact numbers, but it's not expected to be anything major, and we can't really see the chance of more than 180 millimetres falling down there, which is kind of the threshold for flooding at this point here. Moderate to major riverine flooding will only occur if we see more than 200 millimetres fall in a very quick period of time in southeastern Queensland. I guess that's their silver lining of being so wet is it does actually take a substantial amount of rainfall to co uh, cause some significant flooding problems down there. Uh, but again, this further 50 millimetres out in southwestern Queensland is not going to do them any good, that's for sure. Whilst river levels will not rise up above their major flood level peaks that we have seen, their record peaks that we have seen over the last couple of days, we will still expect these river levels to have some intermittent rises, especially through Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. Then they will begin to fall off again through Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. It is just going to add maybe about three or four days of pain to these communities out in southwestern Queensland. A lot of these places are going to take a little bit longer to be completely uh, reunited with the Queensland road network. I don't really see Winton being, uh, or access to Winton being restored in the next week or so with the rainfall that's expected down there. And the same thing with much more remote communities such as Quilpie, Windora, Bedori, Bullia. Rainfall uh, there is likely to cause some pretty significant problems to the already struggling or completely submerged road networks in these areas. Keep in mind across some of these river crossings we have 10 metres of water across over bridges or roads so there is some really significant floodwaters out there and it is going to take a long time for them to drain fully out of the southwestern corner of Queensland and into the Lake Eyre and the Channel Country catchment regions. Lake Eyre is really going to fill up from this rainfall that is pretty much guaranteed at this point in time. Good rainfall also as you can notice on the forecast modelling especially around uh, Rockhampton right up towards Mackay some really good falls can be expected there. Again we're just expecting uh, stagnant thunderstorms and showers to be firing up across this area. It's kind of in the mix of some northerly winds that are going to be coming through from the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria and the Coral Sea. We're expecting northerlies to develop throughout the remainder of this week and that's going to be sending a lot of moisture down in towards the south. And then we've got that moisture coming in from the Northern Territory and across the channel country of Queensland and that's going to meet in this general area here. So areas such as Huendon, Maxwellton, Charters Towers, Glendon, Moranba, Claremont, Emerald, Dingo, Rockhampton, Ogmore, Serena and Mackay could all pick up some relatively significant rainfall accumulations anywhere between that 80 to about 250 millimetres. Of course rainfall will be wetter as you get closer towards the coastline, especially around uh, Yepoon and Rockhampton where you can see on these forecast models here through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday rainfall accumulation is tickling closer to that 150 to 200 millimeter mark on this forecast modeling alone but rainfall accumulation is still likely to be pretty solid and pretty robust into the I believe it's the Burdekin River that covers the majority of this rain swathe here and the Burdekin already struggling with a lot of water in its catchment right now. I'm not 100% sure what the dam is uh, at capacity wise but it is definitely close to 100% so this water could be causing some moderate uh, flooding of the Burdekin River and also some moderate to major flooding of both the Piney Rivers and the Proserpine River as well. So we need to be keeping a very close eye on this rainfall event down in uh, south central Queensland or north central Queensland, however you'd like to refer to it. Certainly some good rainfall on the cards and it could end up being quite problematic for these locations as well. It's strange that we're talking about high rainfall accumulations around Rockhampton and Ogmore, which have uh, been the dry places this year so far, relatively speaking, for Queensland. And as you can see up in far north Queensland, especially along the Cassidy Coast, there's not an awful lot of rainfall to talk about up there. We are expecting these northerly winds by around Thursday or Friday to begin to swing around to the southeast. You can see by Saturday they're fully swung around to the southeast, and as such, showers and storms will return through this coming weekend to uh, far northern Queensland's Cassidy Coast and then eventually into the Daintree Rainforest as well. Nothing crazy heavy in the way of rainfall can be expected, but a couple of hundred millimetres between Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday out to the 9th or the 10th of April can be expected in these locations up here. A bit of a late season burst in terms of rainfall and showers and storms kind of continuing right through Sunday and into Monday the 14th of April out there. Showers and thunderstorms expected to continue for the next couple of months up in far north Queensland. The wet season does begin to pipe down pretty much at around this time here and we do start to see a bit of a decline in rainfall around this time of the year, but in terms of actual showers and wet season activity 
that doesn't fully drop off until June or July. So get used to the residual showers just streaming in from the southeast. They are still going to be in this vicinity and as such some significant rainfall accumulations cannot be ruled out over the next 14 days. And you can actually see 14 day rainfall accumulations on this map here if I can somehow get the rainfall forecast to work. That's the one criticism that I have with windy.com is that often these rainfall forecast modeling uh, things here just refuse to work. You can see rainfall accumulations being wet over far north Queensland, but in terms of the remainder of the Cape York Peninsula, the heaviest falls up towards Torres Island and uh, Thursday Island, that general area up there. In fact, that does lead me nicely on into the Northern Territory with the return of the Madden Julian Oscillation sometime in early April. We are expecting another burst and another wet cycle to uh, make its way across into the Northern Territory, providing some much needed wet season rainfall up there. And we could be seeing rainfall accumulations up around that two to 400 millimeter mark over the next 14 days. This rainfall will begin to pipe up from this coming weekend, but you can see along the coastline accumulations between 200 out to about 400 millimeters up to Nullanby and Cape Wessel can be expected. Heavier falls are possible, but again, they're not really showing up on this forecast modeling here. Darwin can expect up to 150 millimeters of rainfall over the next 14 days. Again, the bulk of that coming in after this weekend and some good falls also expected into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf outside of Wadai, Kalambaru and Kananara on the WA side of things. And that's going to pipe up from a developing tropical low slash tropical cyclone that we could be seeing firing up on the radar. As you can see, much later on into the forecast period, we'll be seeing a lot of energy and a lot of energy being moving from the east over towards the west. And as such, you can see tropical waves and tropical loaves then beginning to spin themselves up into what could be robust tropical cyclones much later on into the forecast period. That leads me on nicely into the, w into the WA forecast. You can see it's expected to be a pretty hectic time after about the 7th of April with tropical loaves expected to fire up pretty consistently offshore from WA. We normally do see this, a late season surge in cyclone or tropical low activity through early and mid-April. And you can see that that's coming in in full swing this year with two tropical lows expected to develop, one north of the WA coastline in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and then another one here well north of the Kimberley, uh, of the Pilbara coastline here south of Java, uh, closer to Indonesia actually and close to Christmas Island at this point, both developing around the 12th and 13th of April respectively. You can see uh, the GFS forecast model also has this exact same thing. In fact, they've got tr uh, twin tropical cyclones developing here, but both tropical cyclones that we just talked about developing in a very similar vein, I do believe that we are going to see at least one or two tropical cyclones much later on in towards mid-April with the chance of a third as well. In terms of impacts to WA, it's still far too early to tell at this point, but it's not unheard of for a strong tropical cyclone to go for the West Australian coastline, especially at this time of the year. So certainly something to be remaining vigilant. And this is bad news for everybody as well. If we do see tropical cyclones and tropical lows develop, not only could they impact the WA coastline with some significant impacts, that's for sure, especially at this time of the year where those sea temperatures are still piping hot offshore from the WA coastline, you can see averaging 30, pushing 31 or even 32 closer to the coastline. So plenty of fuel for these tropical lows slash tropical cyclones to make the most of. But it will also push that west coast trough down into the southwest and western Australia. And that will just jack those temperatures up across the Perth metro area. And you can actually see much later on into the forecast period, the GFS calling for some high 20, early 30 degree temperatures into mid-April. That is quite warm for this time of the year. And certainly it's something that I'm not looking forward to at all. I would like temperatures to finally begin to cool down. It's going to be another warm day across the southwest of western Australia, touching 35 degrees around Perth and some of the eastern suburbs. So it is going to be quite warm again. Uh, those temperatures just not welcome to stick around any longer, that's for sure, as we get in towards the first couple of days of April starting tomorrow. Uh, in terms of interesting stuff around the southwest corner of Western Australia, there is actually a little bit of rain on the forecast. We're expecting some kind of low pressure system begin developing uh, offshore from the WA coastline, and especially down into the Gascoyne coastline through Wednesday and in towards Thursday. And you can see between major forecast modeling here, a few showers and thunderstorms expected to develop around this low pressure system. There's going to be plenty of convective energy around, so whether we see some thunderstorms or showers developing through Friday or Saturday, it's still a little bit out there for the uh, weather gods to decide, but you can see a little bit of rainfall developing across the southwest coast of WA through Friday, especially in towards Saturday morning. We might see a couple of showers before a cold front meets up with this rainfall here and sweeps it all down. It's not a powerful cold front, but it will relieve some cooler temperatures in the wake, especially through uh, the later parts of the weekend and in towards next working week. We could be seeing a few colder days and a few colder nights, especially some colder nights, that's for sure, down into the uh, si uh, single digits across parts of the southwest corner of Western Australia. Uh, a couple of thunderstorms also possible here and there so again we will keep a very close eye on things it doesn't look like too much in the way of rainfall and you can actually see rainfall accumulations throughout the course of this uh not rainfall event but throughout the course of this low pressure system and cold front moving through up to around 50 millimeters but for the most part widespread accumulations between 5 and 25 millimeters look to be the norm still a little bit too early to say what type of rainfall perth can expect considering that this has only been on the forecast modeling for a good couple of days now we'll have a look at uh, in a future forecast update and i'll tell you exactly what perth can expect but right now somewhere around that five to 10 millimeter mark for the Perth metro area.
area. Could be a little bit more down into the southeastern suburbs around Armadale and into the hills. A few good showers also possible into the Weedbelt region, which could bring some much needed rainfall ahead of the wet season down for those locations there. Wet season, though, is not any time soon for South Australia, Victoria, and those parched communities that are really struggling with drought conditions down there, especially for South Australia. There's no relief on the forecast at all until much later on in the forecast period. You can see maybe a little bit of rainfall as we get out towards the first uh, or the second week or two of April. You can actually see maybe a little bit of rainfall moving through and maybe a strong cold front that sweeps through much later on into the month. Uh, and that could deliver 25 millimetres of rainfall here and there, but it's still not going to be enough to relieve South Australia of some of their worst droughts in history or in the last 10, 10 years, that's for sure. And then down in towards Victoria as well, rainfall isn't going to be anything too crazy as well over the next 10 days. And rainfall beyond that is still very uncertain on the forecast modelling. Whilst cold fronts will start to pipe up for Victoria and Tasmania especially, they're already beginning to pipe up around the Tasmanian areas now. And I'm already starting to see trees drop their leaves around the southwest corner of Western Australia. So that does tell me that winter might be coming a little bit quicker than we do expect here. And it could actually start into the later parts of April and the early parts of May. Uh, it's still a little bit too early to tell at this time here. So I don't want anybody to get their hopes up across Victoria or South Australia on the rainfall side of things. But I'm just giving you the heads up that into the third week of April, there might be a little bit of rainfall as the southern annular mode swings in a bunch more favourable direction for these drought-stricken uh, communities. And we might be seeing 50 millimetres of rainfall across parts of Tasmania and Victoria and up to 30 millimetres of rainfall across parched areas in South Australia. It is very concerning when you see more rainfall on the forecast and more rainfall on the historical rainfall maps across the northern parts of South Australia at this time of the year, especially uh, in comparison to the southern parts of South Australia as well along the coastline and on a consistent basis as well because northern South Australia has been much wetter over the last month or so than uh, down in towards the southern parts of South Australia has been. So it is quite a concerning picture, that's for sure. Anyways, nothing really else to dive into detail in with this forecast update. I do hope that you've enjoyed it this morning. If you've got any feedback or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to take a look and respond to them today. Moving into a bit of a quieter period with the weather forecast, at least Australia-wide for the next couple of days, but there is still some interesting stuff on the cards, especially across southwestern Queensland as well. Certainly plenty of stuff to be talking about, that's for sure. But on that note, I'm going to leave this forecast update here. If you have enjoyed the forecast update, please do like and subscribe. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. Again, I could not run the show without them. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you on in the next storm. Goodbye.